November 29th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Daniel Chapter 12 from the Old Testament At that time Michael, the great prince who watches over your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress unlike any other from the nation's beginning up to that time. But at that time your own people, all those whose names are found written in the book, will escape. Many of those who sleep in the dusty ground will awake, some to everlasting life, and others to shame and everlasting abhorrence. But the wise will shine like the brightness of the heavenly expanse, and those bringing many to righteousness will be like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, close up these words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many will dash about and knowledge will increase. I, Daniel, watched as two others stood there, one on each side of the river. One said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, When will the end of these wondrous events occur? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was over the waters of the river, as he raised both his right and left hands to the sky, and made an oath by the one who lives forever. It is for a time, times, and a half a time. Then when the power of the one who shatters the holy people has been exhausted, all these things will be finished. I heard, but I did not understand. So I said, Sir, what will happen after these things? He said, Go, Daniel, for these matters are closed and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made clean, and refined, but the wicked will go on being wicked. None of the wicked will understand, though the wise will understand. From the time that the daily sacrifice is removed and the abomination that causes desolation is set in place, there are 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits and attains to the 1,335 days. But you should go your way until the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days you will arise to receive what you have been allotted. God, I love how intertwined your word is. We know so much of Daniel is also uh, reflective and vice versa in, in Revelation. And today it was really reminding me uh, about a lot of the verses that we read in James. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. We know that we have to suffer here on earth, and that suffering is for your glory. You're constantly refining us, perfecting us, um, making us stronger, uh, able to endure more. I think sometimes, uh, in certain situations, you're also getting uh, some of us ready to deal with end of times. But James goes on to say, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For whom he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And we do know from a couple different places in the Bible that uh, after we go up to heaven um, and all of our bad stuff burns up in the fire and, and our good is left, that, we're re that we actually receive this crown of life from you. Some people think it's going to be a real crown that we, of course, turn around and lay back at your feet. Um, or it's a uh, virtual one, meaning you're giving us eternal life to glorify you. But no matter what eventually happens, we know what is in Daniel is true. Many will be purified, made clean, and refined. But the wicked will go on being wicked. None of the wicked will understand, though the wise will understand. I think it's uh, startling to read that part in Daniel about people uh, being raised from the dead, from the graves, and waking up and either finding yourself in heaven or finding yourself in hell. Not a third option, one or the other. It says, many of those who sleep in the dusty ground will awake, some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting abhorrence. God, allow us to be ever, ever mindful that our trials are 
your love shining through, all pointing to your glory and all allowing us to grow and learn and help guide us in the paths that you know are better for us than things that we choose ourselves. We know that the trials that you put us through, the hardships you put us through, are actually producing strength and endurance and helping us win the, the race that we are running, as Paul says. I do count it as joy whenever I'm going through something hard or difficult or painful because I have learned after all these years finally, right? That you are producing amazing things in me, that everything will be made good for your glory. God, please take everything in my life, good, bad, otherwise, and please use it for good for what it is that you need it to be for. God, we thank you so much for the book of Daniel, for teaching us about your power, for staying true to your word, for teaching us about prophecy, and most of all, for teaching us about sovereignty. God, we just love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.